broadcasting from the depths of outer space. Hello, I'm alive. I don't know what's going on. By your command. Fascinating. God damn you all to hell! No, no, no. It's the Soul Sci-Fi Podcast. Well, hello, and this is episode 94 of the Solar One Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm back again. I'm Michael Ball, a.k.a. Co-Class, and with me once again is the deep thought, the uh, epitome of sci-fi knowledge in this what time and space and universe. It is from Martin's Sci-Fi Appeal on YouTube, Martin Fowler. Hello, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, mate? You all right? Uh, you eat a dodgy uh, kebab uh, or uh, something? Just, uh, I had a merge cringer danger then. Oh dear, we don't want that. How are you? How's it going? I'm, I'm all right. The big thought of the universe is here on the show tonight. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you could be like known as the monolith of the Solo One oh, Sci-Fi what, podcast. Mon- no, fucking. <laughs> so what? I'm going to sit here in a fucking black monolith costume with my head sticking out. You never know, especially with your um, what's it called? That uh, what's that term you have for dressing up? I can't think of it. Um, cosplay, co-play, cosplay, whatever it is. A uh, cosplay. You could go along. We could sort of like going. You could get a big uh, black rectangle box and stick a little sort of your head through it, and you could have your arms through it, and you could go to a convention as the monolith. Actually, do you know? Do you That's know, quite a funny idea, isn't actually, it? Actually, I will say that to my celebrant partner, you are a fucking genius. <laughs> I, I, it wouldn't cost you anything, I, would it? Yeah, I, I, I will say, you know, you are a true fucking genius because <laughs> in all the conventions I've been to, I've never seen anybody anybody dressed, dressed as, as the monolith. monolith. They could do it, and, and it's sheer genius. But how do you go to the toilet? I mean, do you... uh, unless you tie a bottle on it. Oh, no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Again. With elastic band or something. With that fucking thing on you. Well, I mean, after after the um, how do they go to the loo in uh, on uh, in X wings on on Star Wars? You got to think about how do you go to a sci-fi convention as well, the monolith? Well, I, well, I went to Klingon Bank. It's about ten years ago. And I was dressed as Q. I bought a Q outfit. You know, I think I saw that. And, I saw. It. I've seen that well, on I, your page. I, I, I was absolutely hammered, and I went to the toilet because I had a <laughs> pair of shorts underneath the, the dress. What? You yes. Wear. Yes. So I had to lift it up, you know, oh. he said to me, is that how Q has a piss? <laughs> and it was quite, I had to actually, well, like, oh, like, I had to lift it all up. Was it an omnipotent, omnipotent piss, it, was it? An omnipotent moment, yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yes, I can imagine that. That would have been sort of like something you could Next see on the... Next time I'm going to wear a nappy, so... Uh, well, yeah, or a diaper, as I say. Yeah, now... I had a nice experience on YouTube this week. I got called an old man by troll. Somebody no. put on no. Somebody said basically because um, it was something I put on, and somebody says um, this is good, and somebody says this isn't his. This material isn't from him. He's just an old man. Uh, and I thought to myself, you don't get that. Most people. I mean, I don't get trolled very often. And of course, this person was blocked straight away and goodbye, and never seen him again. Yeah, kind of you thing. know, you do right. That's. That's but you, I don't get that very often, and most most people are pretty good on YouTube, at least on my channel. I know you have one or two people on yours who are going to be a bit, you know, sometimes go a bit too far. Um, and I, well, but I, I mean, block them. I yeah, don't, I don't blame you. I can't be dealing with it. When I first started this, I got I got something about I did something about Doctor Who. Somebody told, just said something, and uh, <coughs> I got really upset about it. And my brother said to me, "Don't." You said just don't go, don't be out. Yes, block them. You're never no. going to fucking meet them. So no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if you don't, and I nearly packed them. it in. I nearly packed it in, and then I got another one mm. a few years later, and and he just said something, and I blocked him, and I thought, well, you know, they, they don't have to watch, you know. No, I know. I, what I what I do is I check their channel. <laughs> I try that as well, but I couldn't find this person's channel. For most of them. It's like um, a user. So you're going to the user, yeah. but this person's uh, channel, I channel, I couldn't find it. Yeah, you're, all right, critis- you're all right criticizing sizing people like us, but you're yeah. not done. And when you've got no subscribers, and my channel's got 81,000 subscribers, well, basically, I mean. go fuck yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> when no, I get my silver you. YouTube um, plaque and everything and have it on my wall, and you can look at your one subscriber, and you can feel very smug, can't you, mate? To piss off. Well, um, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. So I look at it, and then I think, well, fuck them. 
There's yeah, no exactly. Point getting upset about it. No, no, no you're right. I know you said this I've before. Had, so in the four, five years I've been doing, I've not had many. I've not had many. So it's kind of. Yeah, I, suppose you, I don't get you said because I don't get into politics, religion, and all. No, and I don't either. I don't. You still somebody always out there who's negative about something. If it was my channel, I don't make money out of it. It is fun. It is to give people a laugh. Is my primary uh, objective of this channel, and I've, I managed to achieve that. And you do the same with yours. Well, I always well, love I, your content. I, you well, know, I, I got a guy when I was doing the live stream and they were going on about people like he's, he, he had a girlfriend from another country and he started being quite derogative so I just blocked him and yeah. I said to him I said I'm not having that on here no because I'm here to talk about fucking science fiction not about yeah. you you dickhead politics I mean we, we talk about no I mean I, we, we do have a little chat before we go into our subject but it's kind of like we know where to go and not go too far yeah you know I mean yeah. we could talk about Jimmy Corkill on Brookside He's a very oh, yeah. interesting. Idiot. <laughs> I don't see how we're going all night about. No, Jimmy no, in the, no, Jimmy. I'll, I'll say Jimmy Corker this week. Oh, well, he's now he's on the drugs, and now he's he's stealing from people's houses to get some money. And in the bottom corner, you'll see here this side, Jimmy Corker is running away after he's broken in from the house this week. Oh, poor Jimmy Corker. Has, has so, little Jimmy turned up yet? We are, we saw little Jimmy for one episode about. A year away, he was on Grand Chill. The guy, that's yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but I know he's coming back. We need to get a fucking life. Really. Now, I know. I actually now also I contacted this guy who's done his interviews with people on Brookside, and yeah. I said, look, maybe in the future, and he hasn't replied. I hope he does, because um, we're doing the odd special like we're doing our Vida Saint Pet next week. Um, is we could do a Brookside special. I'd love to do a Brookside special. Yeah, yeah I'm up for so, um So hopefully, at I'm some up for point, I'm big fan of Barry and Sarah. Yeah, I just, I just think it's just such a well-made should, series. Uh, uh, this is how sad I am. You should, you should watch the Brookside spin-off movies. I've, I've heard about them. I'm going to yeah, once I'm going through the rest yeah. of it. Yeah, I'm going to. But it's a great I, series. I, that's how fucking sad I am. I, I wouldn't do them out and watch them. And at the end of this show, we are going to have, because this is our last recorded show, let's be honest. The, uh, next week is one we recorded ages ago. Um, but uh, we're going to end with Julia Brogan, who is a nosy neighbour, gossipy old lady on Brookside, singing Silent Night, just to wish you a happy Christmas. Okay. So we'll do that one at the more, end. One more thing on Brookside. Has the machine gun scene been on where Jimmy Cork could get it? Have you seen that one? No, spoiler. No, no, I don't know any spoilers. I don't, oh, I don't remember. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Actually, Jimmy Cork. No, I don't know. Don't tell me. No, don't tell me. Because I, I saw this thing bloody 30 years ago, and I can only remember bits of it. But it's good. I'm really, I'm so I, sad. I I'm so know. sorry. But it's better than anything that's well, on I, I don't want to wake up TV. <laughs> and there's 10,000 episodes of fucking books. <laughs> oh, hey, you know. You never know if it magically appears as these things tend to do on your on your um, uh, web pages. Then uh, yes, you should keep an eye out for Jimmy Cork. I like. Um, yeah. Shall we? Shall we go to our focus of the week? This is gonna be a funny one. It's be a good one. Here we go. It's the Solar Sci-Fi Focus of the Week. Now, about a year ago before Christmas, I was trying to look for a, a Christmassy film in the sci-fi genre. And I really couldn't find many. And the one that sprung to mind was Gremlins, because it, it, in many ways, you know, it's set during Christmas. It does have that Chris, Christmassy sort of feel to it. Um, but, um, and that's why we used it. So this year, because I still couldn't find any Christmassy films, at least anything I wanted to do, um, although maybe I should have done Scrooged. I don't know, Scrooge would be sci-fi. We could have done Santa Claus Conquers Mouse. That's a good one. It's British. Well, all right, next year. Right, next year, if you remind me, uh, we'll do that. But for this year, um, because it's it's has some parallels with um, uh, Crit Gremlins, we're going to do Critters. Which is, um, I thought, quite a fun movie, um, and it also features uh, the guy on it who was on the Orville, which is Scott Grimes. So um, let's have I hit the jingle yet? I don't know. Did I hit the jingle or not? Yeah, you, you said focus of the week. And, um, yeah. Okay. So let's ask you then. Uh, let's go straight into it. So you, you must have seen Critters. What do you think of Critters? I saw Critters on the. Uh there was there was uh, there was an even another version of critters called ghoulies 
Oh, I want to see and, that. And, 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 and where they're sticking its head out of the toilet. It, it's more demonic. Really but, and, uh, I rented them two out together at the time. Oh, okay. Like a sort of like... And, uh, yeah, and it was like a critters. Like, critters ripped off gremlins. And, and yes, Julie's ripped off critters. But I, I remember the first film. And I, made I loads of films. Great, great film. I like the Bouncy Hunters from Outer Space. We, one of them uh, was actually um, Ethan Phillips, who played Neelix on Star Trek really? Voyager. He was it, one of the Bounty Hunters in the first one. Keeps changing his form. He yeah, he got Eden, didn't he? Uh, no, he, no he, uh, did he get Eden? Yeah, something happened. Yeah, to him. yeah I think the, he did. The, the, the critters form the thing called the Death Wheel or something. The giant, the giant one. critter. Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember. But at one point, the other bounty hunter, not the one that's a pop star, the one he ends up as uh, Ethan Phillips, who of course played Neelix on Critters. Um, so, did you see all the sequels as well, or do you I, think I've seen? I, I think I've seen up to about Critters four or three. I think there's been five movies. There might have Something been. Something like that. I think this has been a, a more recent one as well. I, I, no, I'd say up to three. I yeah, don't yeah. Think I never that. got. I never got. I think I'm about the same because I like the first one. The, the second was all right, but then after that, it, it kind of like it was. It's one of those things. I mean, like Gremlins only made two, one sequel, uh, yeah. which, which had Robert Picardo in it again. Another another character. They were so perfect. Boy, he was very good. Um, and the sequel to that, I thought, was very good in, in New York, and it was all starting off again. Yeah. But Critters. I mean, which, just I know we're going to focus on critters, but which one would you say you prefer, critters or gremlins, or do you think about the same? I'd, oh, that's a, that's a bit of a tough one. I'd have to say gremlins because it's mainstream, and there were more yeah. many, there were more quality with with gremlins. But I'd, I'd, as like you are me, we're like fans of the VHS genre. Yes. And and, and yeah, I'm going to go for critters actually. Are you going because for critters? It, it's got that subculture to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah. I, I like the fact that, you know, because it had some. It was. It was obviously a bit dark and a bit more sort of yeah. adult in tone compared to Gritter. Well, uh, the, well, I mean, the, the concept yeah, the same. Wasn't it? When a town in America, these things crash land there and they start going on a devastating path out the prisoners or something at take over. Yeah, they're, they're called they're called Krites or something, and yeah. they um they they escape from a penal colony, I think. And they, they eat everything, don't they? Don't, they they're, eat, they're, they, they're, they're, they're they, very malevolent. But they don't sort of like replicate like the, the gremlins do. They eat, and no. some of them get bigger. But then yeah. they just they just want to eat. But they don't I all grow in size. One that a human size one running about. Yeah, there was in the first the one. There's one, one. There's one for some reason that out. gets bigger, and it gets bigger than a human. And um, yeah. but it doesn't explain why it gets bigger than the others. It's still the same size. Maybe it's yeah, like I a queen or something or some yeah. sort of. And, you know, it would mind a bit more explanation about that, really. And the two bounty hunters turn up, and there's that nerdy guy in the town that gets picked up. Called Charlie, yeah, it's going, and he's, he's always like on the dr drinking, and he, he ends up being uh, copied by the bounty hunter, and then eventually, yeah. in later films, he joins them. He goes off into space with them. Yeah, because they like, give him a device to contact them, don't they? That's they it. I think back. he goes yeah, off the in the end, second one. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and also Scott Grimes, who of course it's strange seeing him now because he was of course on the Orville. He plays I can't remember the name of the, the character on the Orville, but Scott Grimes is on the Orville now as one of the main. Yeah. What's the? Yeah. Uh, you know the one I mean. I, I don't know what character he plays on. I know I can't remember many of the actual characters on the Orville, but he's the the, the cheeky one on the um, on the on the bridge. End with the beard. Yeah, is he got a beard? Yeah, he has got a beard. He, he, yeah, he, yeah. He's the one where uh, Isaac chopped his leg off as a joke. Yeah, yeah, but I just cannot remember his character's name. I'm sorry, I should know that. Is he actually. in that? He must yeah, have been a kid, he was that. a kid. He was the kid. He was the uh, the oh. kid of the family. In in uh, yeah. and he and he appeared in the second one, and he had been. He was a bit older the second one. I think they had like a two or three year gap between production of the first one and the second one. Um, but I remember just watching this, and I, I just thought it was really quite a cool film. I just liked it that. Um, you know, it's, I don't know, I did, I liked it because of uh, Gremlins, I think, because it had that similar feel of these tiny creatures who are deadly and they want to, but they, I don't know, it just had a parallel to it. But they're more like alien Gremlins, weren't they, rather than Gremlins who yeah. are from Earth yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. And they're not affected by water. But, so, I mean, I was looking here and, and on the Wikipedia, it says that, I'll just quickly read it out for people's reference. It says that Critters is a 1986 American science fiction comedy ho horror film 
directed by Stephen Herrick in his directorial, de- uh, directorial debut. I can never say that. Uh, and co-written by Dominic Moore and Don Keith Oper. It stars Dean Wallace, who I know from quite a few other things, M. Wallet Walsh, Billy Greenbush, and Scott Grimes in his film debut. So that goes back to Scott Grimes. The plot follows a small group of furry aliens with carnivorous behavior escaping from two shape shifting bounty hunters landing in a small countryside town to feast on its inhabitants. Uh, and it says, although widely believed to have been inspired by the success of Joe Dante's 1984 Gremlins, Herrick has refuted this in interviews, pointing out that the script was written by Moir long before Gremlins went into production oh, and subsequently right. underwent rewrites to reduce the apparent similarities to the two films. The film grossed 13.6 million during its release in the US and spawned a Critters franchise consisting of three sequels and a web series titled Critters A New Binge released on Shudder. A fifth entry, Critters Attack, serves as a reboot of the series. So there's been quite a few. I've not seen all those, obviously. No, I haven't. Um, but it, it spawned a lot of, um, obviously, sequels. I, I, I didn't know. I thought that one went straight to video. I didn't saw that one to the cinema. Yeah, though. I think I remember it being in the cinema. Oh, I don't right, think it was just right. a VH. I, I think Ghoulies. I think Ghoulies was uh, just a Ghoulies, story. definitely. But I think Critters was a bit bigger than that. Well, maybe right, it was over well, there. Did, it might have been... Know. Well, no, it might have been just straight to video in the U- UK. Actually, I think Goalies was at the cinema. Actually, I remember uh, at the ABC. I remember the poster. I never forgot the poster that thing sticking out of the toilet. Oh. That, that was like the definite picture of it, this green thing sticking out of the toilet, you know. <laughs> so, so I, 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 I'm, I'm going to have to watch them again. But I yeah. didn't know critics were, were at the cinema. It was I, honest, I thought it was straight to video. Actually, it was said to release it. It said, Critters was um, theatrically released on April the 11th, 1986 by New Line Cinema, opening across the United States in 633 theatres, um, and it earned 1.6 million in its opening weekend, and ultimately grossed 13 mil in the box. So it was a proper cinema release. I don't know about the UK, though. Oh, here we are. Home video. The film was released on VHS and with Laserdisc home video after its theatrical release in September 1997, New Line re-released on VHS. I don't know, but this is obviously talking about the American side. It might have been different over here. I don't know. Um, I don't yeah, know, it's a lot of their stuff. It goes straight to video away. A lot I of, think a lot I think it. I saw and it. You don't realise it went to one of their cinemas over there. You don't, because I, I assumed it was made for video. Yeah, I mean, I I know that I saw it. I think I got it out from a video store because you did. I mean, over here we didn't just have blockbusters. We had you used to get these like uh, news agents which had like video sections and stuff like. Oh that. yeah, we had that. Yeah, it was mostly that. Or a garage. Like, yeah, yeah, something like that. And uh, I remember in Roehampton where I used to live, there was a, a news agent which had a video thing, and I used to get them from there. And I'm sure that's where I saw it. I mean, I yeah, it was sort of like when Ritz's and Blockbusters come in, that's when they started adding out refreshments and that. They made it into like a cinema thing. That was they? the latter that was the latter side of VHS, which I think Yeah, well be, like, I think that came about what, late eighties was Blockbusters? Yeah, that's UK? when it all went to a new level. And that's when it? it was different. And that's just when VHS started to turn into DVDs. Yeah. And then that's when it started to change and and then of course the um, digital stuff. I, I, I'll that. tell you something, never had the laser disc. Never had a laser. How would they were so bloody expensive when that? Yeah, they were, and it's it's shame. It's the first HD quality thing. But then yeah. the thing is, the TVs weren't so good because, of course, they were four by three size TVs anyway. So if you watched a, a, you know, and so the screen would be small, and if it was watch, if it's a proper cinema format, it'd be tiny. Anyway, that's why it wasn't. It's only now that the bigger most screens now are huge. Plus their 16 by 9 ratio that you can get these films in HD because you can yeah. really appreciate it, and especially with the sound systems. I, well. I did think I, I did a couple of, about a year ago. I did think about buying a laser disc. I did. did you? I honestly, I did, yeah, out of curiosity because I've never had one. You can pick them up cheap and and get the films. And but uh, well, like, what is I, a, I, I was going to say, what is a laser disc picture compared to say Blu-ray? Is it better? It's, it's, I don't think there's no comparison. I think Blu-ray just all over it you know yeah. i think it, it's i think like laser day were more dvd quality very high dvd oh yeah yeah of course, I, 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 I think i watched these uh laser disc collectors on youtube but apparently once you put the bloody film in you've got to turn it over <laughs> so what, I, it, it just, I, don't, I don't think i want to get off the off the couch and then turn it over to watch the other half yeah, i was just when... curious about them 
I know, think it's, it'd be nice to check it out. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Because I remember them when they come out, they were about six, seven hundred pound, and and I would I would have been mid early twenties. I mean, that was yeah, a lot yeah. of money. That it was. And I, you know, I didn't have that. So I That's why I never thing. took off. It's too expensive. That's why. Yeah. And of course, it's um, a shame, really. And I always like those because like, obviously they look like vinyl, but they're a reflective like CDs, and they always look really cool. The discs, didn't they? Or the, yeah, the they did. Yeah, it looked like albums, didn't they? Like yeah, they look like they look like vinyl albums. They're exactly the same size, but they were, they were, yeah. they were you know, they were more reflective. And they uh, did you know? I, I know it's going off topic a bit, but did you know that? Uh, Vinyl records, there was an experiment where they actually tried vinyl records and they put films on them. No, was there enough space I, I on Check there? out a channel called Techmon. Tech, a guy called Techmon, and right. he, he bought one of these devices where you put in a vinyl record and you can watch a film. Wow. They actually tried it. I think one of these, I think it was Philips or something like that. They actually released this device in some country. It didn't, never took off. But it's a vinyl album, and instead of music, it's a film on it. Wow! I, I, I never knew about that. I, I, there were so many different formats back then. It was yeah. crazy. It's amazing, isn't it? That is interesting. Uh, if I find the video, I'll send it to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'd be good. We'll like to check that it's out. guy called Techmon. He, he covers all this weird technology back from then. It's fascinating. Uh I still feel sad that really with digital films now, with MP4s, MKVs, mm. AVIs. You know, in many ways, there's nowhere else for it to go. I mean, we have talked about this before, but I, you know, that's it. That's the last kind of yeah. um, because you know, if you get a better quality film in the future, it might be a different format name. It's still going to be a digital copy, you know. And so, yeah. yeah. But I mean, you know, I I like digital copies of films, and you know, you can put them on a hard drive and back them up. And also, it's the great thing about digital is. Yes, you don't get all the bonus features. You don't get the sleeves, which I yeah, really miss. How many times are you going to watch the bonus features? I mean, yeah. do you watch all Only, the bonus features? No, I don't. Not often. I, watch, I might watch one or two, and then I move on. Okay. And often the bonus features are then streamed on YouTube anyway. People rip them yeah. off, and you can yeah, watch them anyway. Are. That's true. That's so, true. So really, but I do like, I mean, like I've got all the Doctor Whos, and I still do the, the artwork and stuff like that. You know, I, I will I, say... I, I miss thought, that. I miss that. I thought the Doctor Who extras are probably... That and Stargate, you probably got the best Oh, God, the Stargate. Oh, my God, the DVDs and That's Stargate. That's one thing I will oh, miss. Good. Yeah, we used to get Terror Rothery. I think they yep. from um, and, and uh, General Stargate. Hammond, yeah. and they used to come on every episode of Silent. And this week, and it was really a bit cheesy the way yeah. they did it, but I loved that. I just thought it was yep. really. I mean, yeah, yep. that's one Definitely. thing. But you know, like I said, but then they could say, well, you can just look at it online, or you can pay to watch it. And it's like, I yeah, know. or you just go to Vimeo or Daily Motion and find it all on there. Yeah, so. yeah, it, yeah, it is strange. Uh, but just to say back to Critters, it was certainly a very good film. I'm really glad that they made it. I still think, whatever, regardless of what this guy says on here, I still think it was very influenced by. Um, uh, oh Gremlins. yeah, yeah, yeah Gremlins. He's just that's why you it. got this and Goalies, and the. And I bet there's other versions out there of something. Yeah, which and also we have this. Not come across. This came out in 1986. I think Gremlins came out in 1984. Come on, it's just two years later. We have exactly yeah, the perfect it's, time. It's, it's the dude. You get a mainstream movie, and then they make. And they make their own, it. and it is a copy. I'm sorry, it yeah. is. Heavily influenced by uh, yep. Gremlins, but in its in its defence, it's still a very enjoyable film. It's 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 daft, it's it. cheesy, but yeah, it's a good film. I don't think I'm going to go to the Critters Five, so. No, I mean I'm, I'm interested. So let's have a quick look at this fifth entry called Critters Attack. Uh, Critters Attack is a 2019, so it's really quite com uh, recent well, that's, horror that's comedy. Quite, that's recent. Yeah. Um, the reboot of the, uh, it's the reboot, which is what I hate the word reboot, of the '86 film Critters and the fifth entry in the Critters film franchise. Although the returning actress Dee Wallace was assumed to be portraying a new heroine dis distinct from the Helen Brown character, Wallace herself confirms she was reprising the original role. So Helen D. Okay, Dee Wallace is back in it, with the name changed to Art D due to p potential legal issues. Oh God! And it says the plot: while babysitting two teenagers. College student Drea discovers that the alien cries have landed in the nearby forest. They soon receive help from the mysterious Aunt Dee who might have a history of the hungry intergalactic beasts. So, um, okay. At least she's back in it from the original movie. Um, I, I might try, I might, I might give it a go at some point. I might be, I'm quite sincere, as it's a contemporary thing. But you know it's not going to be very good. 
by the sounds of it. Because you and I never even heard of it. No, so I, I don't think I, I knew they'd done. I thought they'd done f four or five about fifteen years ago. I didn't know they'd made only twenty. No, and this obviously wasn't big because it says the film was released onto DVD disc and digital uh, viewing. Unlike the other critics' films, which have all been paid rated PG-13, this film was released as an unrated and standard R version due to having more blood and violence. Right. Uh, uh, film received mixed mix. reviews. It, mix, it received mixed reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Film holds a approval rating of 44%. Bloody disgusting gave the film, uh, film two out of five uh, skulls, claiming that the fifth film suffers from bland cast characters, poor pacing. And more significantly, a lack of campy fun. Yeah, but that's a problem, isn't it? When you watch, when you make these modern versions of films, they're going to lose some of that eighties cheese, which makes them endearing. You know, they, they can't really do it. No, I think we'll just stick with the original one or two, yeah, especially the first uh, one. The ones that I'd go as far as two, and then after that, just bury it. Yeah, I think you you're know, right. because yeah, we're getting into the stage. Let's let's turn out and move this. For everything, if we, if, look, if we can even screw a five and a half people for it, let's do it. You know, I guess <laughs> it's that's true. It, but that's it's true. How it is though, and it the fucking milk everything, don't they? To a point where it's so bad, and it's so and they'll come out with some like twist just to make it different, and it's terrible. Absolutely, yeah. and I, I'm sick of this. Yeah, these, you know, so I am always sick. do it. They said Definitely. always do that. It is really bad, isn't it? Nothing ever particularly new comes out. No, but. Um, yeah, well, I'm sure, like I said, there are some new things I'm watching, but yeah, it's it's strange, isn't it, how um, there's something lacking in Hollywood these days. Right, well, I think that's about it for me for this review. Um, thank you, Martin. Any last words before we go into our news of the week? No, no, that's it. All right, mate. Well, that's great. Well, thank you for that. So let's go into our... I've got some... Yeah, we're going to talk about the new uh, Star Trek episode, Discovery. So, yeah, let's, let's go into that. Here we go. Working. So the sci-fi news. All right, so this week, um, now, did we see the last Doctor Who last week? We did, didn't we? We've already talked about that. So we've already done that. So the only new thing I've seen this week is the episode four of Discovery. It's the one where Tilly and the Starfleet cadets crash on a planet and they've got to escape. And it's, we've seen shuttles crash so many times on Star Trek, but they, they're often quite fun episodes. You know, Galilee 7 was an early one. Um, yes. What do you think? What do you think of episode episode four? What do you think of it? Well, it, it, well, it was all right. I was more interested in the politics of the Federation president than than her being stuck on a planet with them because it's nothing I haven't seen before. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 that was a lazy writing episode, basically. One thing it which was is, all right, but how many episodes we've had it in Voyager, we've had it in DS9, we've had it in the original. Well, let's, okay, let, let's test that knowledge. Now, let's think of episodes <laughs> where a shuttle craft has crashed. Galileo 7 crashed in the original series. Uh, there was an episode um, where a shuttle crashes with Troy, next, uh, yeah, Troy, Riker, and O'Brien, and they get taken over by entities. That was an episode of Next Gen. Um, Tom Paris and Neil it's crashed a shuffle episode in Voyager. Enterprise Trip crashes a, uh, I think a shuffle with an episode with a princess. And so we've got this one now. Yeah, this one thing... as well, DS9. Oh, a runabout crash with Bashir and O'Brien. Um, yeah, and, and there was another one with, with Cisco and is it Bashir? Oh, or yes. An awful and... woman uh, made him work in the fields because she was she running that. That agrarian society, and he, he found out. Yes, he turned out. No, that was not that was that wasn't a shuttle. Uh, that wasn't a shuttle crash. That was being down. That was where technology didn't work. That oh was, yeah, they didn't. I thought they crashed on that. No, but they did. Uh, there was an episode with. Um, Bedic, oh yeah, because the shuttle was in. Yeah, you're right. Ky, no, Ky, no, Kyle Parker, in season one of DS9, crashes mm -hmm. with Cisco, and she's in like, this episode where the people can't die, and she ends up on left on the planet. That was a shuttle crash. Uh, and also, um, she actually died she, recently. She, yeah, I saw that. I, um, mm. Saville, Camille, something. I can't remember yeah, her name. she died. Yeah, she died recently. That was a shame because I always thought it was a shame that um, her character wasn't brought back. Uh, they because it, it was left open. She, she her last episode was in season one. Now, wouldn't it have been interesting in say season six or seven with Kai Win if Kaya Parker had come back and shaken Ooh. up? Now, why they didn't do that, I don't know. 
but I think that could have been a really interesting episode. And they never did. Maybe the actual yeah, put available. Kai win in her place. Yeah, and because yeah. They, they, it was split the whole thing because of course Kaya Parker was more respected and Kai Win was more of a opportunist looking for her own ends kind of thing. Definitely. And they never did that, which is quite interesting. Um, but um, going back to Discovery, yeah, it was okay. I mean, one thing I keep saying is we need a lot more exterior shots of the ships. We hardly ever see, like, do you know, like all the other Star Treks, you always had the recycled, like the the Enterprise orbiting a planet or the same shot of the warp going to warp. You you hardly ever see the ships in space. You like, I don't know why they do it like that, but I, I'd like. I'm quite a ship guy, and you never really you only see like one or two shots of Discovery per episode, which I, I don't know why, but I just I'd like to see more exterior shots in space. I mean, it was, it was I mean, it wasn't a bad episode. I mean, I'm, I'm, it was I'm, all right. It was fine. It was all right, but it was okay. You know, watching Tilly on the planet with them seven, with them whinging, what is it? all like, you know. It, it, the chance of getting to the thing where she's trying to show them how to all work together and all this and so it, do you it, think i've seen it all before but do you think it, the actress i mean I, I know she's coming back but it looks like the actress who plays tilly is pretty much not going to be a sort of main role so much in the, in the well she, she's going to be involved teaching them all that and uh, she's going to come into some conspiracy with that president now, I see a Trek fan this week who said, or I, I, somebody said that they, there's potentially the idea that um, Tilly could get her own spin-off series of the Starfleet Academy. No, but you know Starfleet Academy? That's been mooted since 1987 with Harv Bennett. And they keep talking about yes. doing a... So do, you, it, do you want Academy? Do you want it? Not particularly. Not particularly. I would watch a lot it. A lot, lot of super good looking teenagers, and they've all got. Well, it's, and it's all I'm, like... I'm not particularly a teen. It's, it's like. Well, it will all right. It'd be like middle aged, like really super good looking people, all joining Starfleet Command, <laughs> being trained. And, and and then they'll have problems <laughs> like they do in Buffy and all that, and then they deal with a situation. But in the background, there'll be a villain. In the background, up to something. Oh, at the I, I don't know. I don't and, know. and then there's love affairs, and then you know, and uh, yeah, I, I don't really want that. I couldn't care less about Starfleet Academy. But if yeah. they make it, I will watch it. Of course you will. We all will. Yeah. But I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I, I mean, all right. So would you rather see that in the Section Thirty One series? Let's ask you that. Uh, so I, I've got one, but I'm curious about I'm a big fan of Michelle, yeah, so I, I'd be curious about so it. So you'd rather see that for the moment? But I think they're very, they're very limited to what they can do with it. You know, it's only how far can you go with that? Well, it's just about learning to be in Starfleet. I mean, yeah, I you, well, sex, I mean, yeah, but like the Section 31 series, it's, it's, it, it's all going to be about uh, undercover with other operatives fighting the evil dark threats. You know what I mean? Do you th do you think the David Cronenberg character in Discovery is a um, um, like the head of Section Thirty One or something like that? Because he's very mysterious, isn't he? I can't remember his name. Yeah, there's some connection. There is some connection, but it's all a bit pointless. What's his start at now? Because we know the future. <laughs> Well, no, we don't now because it's finally in the future, isn't it? I mean, yeah. obviously, David Cronenberg's character is doing the 31st century. This, so. uh, this new century they're in, it's set after the Temporal War, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that was the 20th Yeah, yeah I think it is after the Temporal War, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Which is good. I'm up for it. Look, as, as long as we're getting more to Star Trek, the one I'm interested in is Strange New Worlds. Haven't heard Jack Chip from that for no, ages. Don't I know, know what's the wrapped up filming and all. Yeah, that's all I've heard. That was about three or four months ago. But I've got some big news for you on this show today. Ooh, please share it. Come on, I want to hear. Uh, Arvel's back on March 22nd next year. Yeah, I, know, I did know that actually, oh, and that's great. No, no, I, no, it's been talked about for a while because uh, um, <laughs> Egotastic Fun Son, who's, who's on YouTube, who I'm a big yeah. fan of. Um, yeah, he said I that, but it. that's really good. I can't wait to see that um, because yeah. that's been a long wait for that one. I think it's going to be 10 episodes and they're going to be hour long, hour and 20 minute episodes each or something. Cool. But they still don't know yet whether it's going to be renewed for a fourth season. Some people are saying it's not going to be, but they don't know. It might be I'm too long to wait. I'm a bit worried with off because it's been two years now since we... Uh, since the last uh, season two since the last season and i felt when it started it was for me it was just it was on the it was on the head yeah 
it were better than Star Trek. It, 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 it was just right. Everything I wanted in a series. Yeah, it's better than contemporary perfect. Star Trek. It's better than and contemporary Star Trek. Absolutely. It became a bit more than a series. It became quite personal to me. I, I, I loved the characters and I really grew with it. And there was a whole universe opening up here. And it's lost its Massive momentum. Universe. It's in such a long gap that it's lost its momentum. It's lost the building. Well, that's what I'm worried about. I'm also worried about I'm going to lose my connection. And plus, oh, hang on, hang on. Uh oh, uh oh. Blooper. Uh oh, look at this. We're live. Yeah, oh, my wire dropped out. My that's all right, God. That's no, 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 but I'm worried, I'm worried about that. You know, the people, like you're connected to them. Well, that is it going to be the Is the momentum, is it all going to be the same? Or is it just, and we're going to watch it and think, oh, God, this is terrible. I hope not. I hope that. I, 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 I that think state, so much magic I, I, there. I think. I think it's going to be great because season I two so. had the um, Isaac race, um, who obviously were evil and they were going to destroy the universe. Who flared up, and that that was at, and the, at the end of the it's alternate timeline. Yeah. I and all the people who made the first two seasons are involved. It's not like a complete reimagining like they've done with nah, Discovery. I hope not. I, I I would be surprised if it flops. I think it's going really good. I just well, hope it's not going to be You know, I, I, out of everything, this is the one I'm really waiting for. You me, know, well, I, 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 this is it for me. The ones, the big ones for me are. Um, I, I'm, I am looking forward to big Book of Boba Fett big time. Oh, I cannot wait for Obi Wan Kenobi. The Orville. But I put, I put and the new worlds. To me, the Orvils are for the same level as the Manda. Yeah, Amazing. I could see I, that. I, I, big, I think that's so. That's a big no, climb. I, I actually, I think I agree because it was so solid, especially both seasons, especially the second yeah, season. Definitely. Yeah, it's really up there, and it's higher than Discovery. I have to say, sorry, yeah. it's it's yeah. higher than Discovery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. So it's just, it, it's just the quality. And, and, I, and I, you know. I, I'm right with your fears that you just talked about with the Orville season three. I have fears with Strange New Worlds that it's not going to be very good. I, I'm, ho I'm really worried that the build-up we had for Discovery, and I'm not saying it has really improved, it has improved, but I, when I, we first, I, I'm worried I, about I, that. I have to say this season, I, I know we're four episodes in, but it is, I have to say, what I'm going to say, since I made her captain, I'm actually starting to warm to her character. She's a great captain. Her character is so different. And, and I just think it works for her as well. She's really, I, I think also... I, just, I couldn't stand her in last series. And, and, and second sale, sort of in and out with her. I found first series interesting. Uh, 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 Being the one that's... But, um, but yeah. again, this is her journey, isn't it, to the big chair. So this is... I suppose this is all part of the story. So I think if we get another season, I think she's going to really shine. I, I, think got, this, oh, admit, I don't mind her now. No, and I, I think the whole series of Discovery, it's just not really what I, I was expecting when it came out. No. And I think that they have really tried to course correct the whole show to be yeah. a bit more palatable to us long-term fans as well as for, for newer fans. And I think for the majority, not in some ways, but I think they have succeeded quite well so far. Yeah. And I, I'm very pleased to say that. And I, I'm really, I really look forward to the new episodes. The last two, which were a bit more uh, sort of uh, fillers, but I didn't mind that. I don't mind a show where you have episodes to focus on the characters and build up. And all the other yeah. series have done that. And it's done very well so far. So let's see. I think next week's going to be more of an action packed story. I've seen a trailer for it. It looks quite good. Um, yeah, bring it on. I'm, I'm really enjoying yeah, it. Let's see yeah, how it goes. I mean, I'll see it some other, and you know, I, I, you know, I've enjoyed it. Last week was a bit of a. I was more interested in the political side of it all because I think I think Tilly's going to go to Starfleet Academy. There's going to be some dodgy going on there. Yeah, she's going to come it's back. Connected to her. Yeah. And I, I mean, this could all be wrong. The Admiral's going to team up with the Vulcan president towards the end. I agree with you. There's going to be some standoff between Starfleet and another part of it over this some situation. I think some that race disputes. they found, yeah. that race they woke up, I think they're not what we think they are. They're coming back and they're not going to be nice. And they're keeping all. it quiet. They're hoping you're going to forget about it. And then it's like, yeah, oh, I, 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 this is they're all woken up. That's what me. I think. 
Yeah, that's yeah. what I think. But you, see, you and I seem to think quite similarly about this yeah, idea. Yeah, I just think that uh, that she will be forced out of the presidency. She's going to make a move. Because it, it's just certain things like when she said to him, you know, will, will I get just, you know, when that Starfleet officer got murdered? And she said, what about justice for his family? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and she, like, she sacrificed, like, that to please the Vulcans and she's mm. desperate to get them on board yeah. but the Vulcan woman now I think the Vulcan president she's the Navarre president she's quite an honourable person I've got a I, feeling I think, I think she's going to be that a, she's going to become president or that yeah happens. yeah yeah I could see that and that would be a way, a way of unifying the Federation because yeah. Uh, yeah. Vulcan or Navarre is such an important presence of the Federation the other yeah, uh, pre-Federation worlds we see that Navarre because it's not only Vulcan it's Romulus as well because well, yeah, they're, and, and, and if they're back together, then that's going to be huge. That'd be a major part of the quadrant. Will be then Federation based again. Definitely, because Vulcan was the, with Earth was the heart of Federation with Andor yeah. and Tella. And, and of course, you because know. the thing is, at the moment, although they haven't been explained it, if Navarre is Romulan, Romulus and Vulcan together, that's a major part of, of yeah, the actual definitely. Uh, of the Milky, Milky Way or the Alpha Quadrant races. So um, if they both join the Federation, then that means Romulans are now Federation members. It's just that yeah. they've got the new name. That's quite a big thing. Yeah, I just think when I look at her, it's it was president of, of, of Vulcan Navarre. They have got to she bring back. She looks like a Federation president to me. She looks like she could be the president. Not the other woman. She's so I don't know. She's There's something going on with her in the background and i think we're getting i think that the the, the storylines are being set now that yeah. they're being implanted i think Tilly's going to come across some conspiracy at starfleet commander and yeah. he's appeared that david cronenberg guy mm. him as well he's he was the one that he was the one that's trying to get her to join the, the actual um, yeah panel, there's something so. going on there's something going on and yeah. i think there's going to be a standoff. i totally agree with you what you said it's a standoff coming but not so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it I'm looking forward to it they haven't yet confirmed I think somebody said it's 13 episodes this season but I don't know if that's been confirmed how many episodes there are this season right I thought there uh, were 15 oh you might be right I don't know I'm I don't right. know I'm not sure I'm not sure because why. Uh, because why is she fascinating I mean she, she, another thing that with that Federation president it, she's fascinated by uh, you know uh, the captain at Discovery I thought what's the name now what, Michael Burnham, Burnham, Burnham. Yeah, Burnham. Right. And she, she's always wanting to. She Burnham. has been always evaluated. So maybe there's something more to why she's That's so what interested. I mean. And, yeah, and she, she said, when you turned up, we all resented you because you were going on, you know, with your hope and, and, and your. Because of that's the, how it used to be in the Federation of Old. Yeah, and, and a lot of people resented them for that. And yeah. I think there's some kind, there's something in that is. Where your answer, Discovery were very clever because in first season, when I sat and re watched the first season again, mm. <coughs> with Lorca's character, and when he turns up in his episode, at the end of his episode, there's a scene and it goes on for about five or six seconds. He looks at himself in the mirror. Yes. Like you mentioned that. And before. I never noticed that before. I never, because yeah, yeah. first time I never thought where it was going. And then I watched, saw that six second clip and I thought, They've put everything that's going to happen in this season in that six second moment. And you just got to notice it. But you, yeah, only, yeah. But you only really would realize it once you rewatched it. Yeah. You see, that's yeah. The and that's thing. an and I thought, well, analogy of the mirror universe. Mirror. Yeah. And that yeah. was the biggest giveaway. But watching it, for, I never thought. Now, I, 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 maybe I'm a bit over analyzing, but I'm trying to find. I think in a lot of TV programs, they put the answer in right at the beginning. But it's there in front of you for about three seconds, and if you pick up on it, right, right, yeah. you, you're gonna find you're gonna put it's like the Rosetta Stone for most, the whole thing. Most people don't. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, as you yeah, say, no, a lot of shows. But, yeah, yeah. But it's that president. She's gonna be one of the big villains in this season. I, I, I could be wrong, and, and I'll probably get shot down. But the, it's just how she's fascinated with it. It's like the other way. She tried belittling her as well. Mm -hmm. Like, like, and 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 when she opened her, intimidating, yeah, her. yeah, and then she opened her mouth. Why did uh, that conference said, look, you know, why did you know, Starfleet office, we have a tribunal thing, 
why don't you do that with membership? And yeah. and it were like she wanted her there for the reason, yet yet she was against that and, and, and for it. There's something going on. Absolutely. And I, I think D- David Cronenberg's character, Tilly going in the Academy, that president and the rebels is gonna be the, that Vulcan president is gonna become one of the big leading we're standing against the Federation in this series. There's something yeah, going on. I can on. see that. I can see that. It should be good. Let's hope they don't mess it up. Like I said, no. you never know how they're going to do it. I mean, like I said, with the Doctor Who don't, finale, yeah, Well, we did. Every a... week we were, for five weeks, we were quite positive about it. We did. We did. We, we were. And then we got I, the, no, no, I, the I, WCF like I said before, moment. I, it's on hold. It's going to happen, but you're going to have to yeah, Well, it's one chapter of a bigger story, isn't it? Yeah. And basically, like I said, the three, the next, three specials which are done, they're all made yep. literally during the season 13 production. They've just been put on. It's just literally a gap. So it's just basically, it's like you've watched this episode. It's like a mid-season um, yeah. point. That's mid-season where I've pause. Tried to put it down. That's where it is. It's a mid-season pause. Um, and that's why it's frustrating because they can't give all the answers until next year when they've released yeah. the other three. That's the way I see it. So although it's, you know, it's still part of the same thing. So uh, um, what other news have I got? Um, I saw something from that you might be interested in actually. Gotham Knights, the CW is developing another Batman spin-off. Have you heard about uh, that? Uh, another one. Well, I, I, I saw Gotham, what they made a couple of years ago. I saw some... I think I only watched about one season of it and then just forgot about it. Quite enjoyable. It, 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 if it's CW, I'm open to it. Okay. I like the new Superman. I've got to admit, I'm quite impressed with that. Oh, I saw an advert for that. I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not. I, big, I have to say, I'm fan. quite impressed. I'm very okay. impressed with that. Brilliant. It's much uh, darker. I watched Titans last night, uh, which is like I said, it's, uh, it's a sister series to Doom Patrol. I do recommend you should watch Doom Patrol. Uh, yeah, I, one of those things I mean to get really around to say. weird. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, you, you know, they pull a, a whole town out of a donkey's hat. Don't even, it's, that, it's that bonkers. And Timothy Dalton is insane in it. He is, is he? brilliant. Yeah, Timothy, there's all big star cast in it. Well, I'll tell you Fraser. what, if you watch Doom, Doom Patrol, then you've got to watch Russian Doll. That's the one I recommend. Well, that's a bit of a challenge, isn't it? Because there's no way I can squirm my way out of this thing. <laughs> She like well, I, I I don't know you. I, I mean, it's like oh, um, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. do that. Maybe the new year or something. We could do that. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll look Dude, into it. Russian, yeah. Yeah. Russian doll. Right. I enjoyed. Yeah. If you yeah, like, all right. yeah. if you like the sort of Groundhog Day kind of scenario, t- time looping right. thing, then that's right. what it's about. But it is. It, I thought it was quite solid. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Okay. We'll try. If yeah, you remember, all right. we'll Let, probably we'll, forget. We'll go into that in January then. We will we'll... probably forget. But if we remind each other, I, yeah, I'll, all right. Do, do yeah. Patrol and Russian yeah. Doll. That's what I forget. Yeah. Um, that's it for news. I haven't got anything else major this week. No, no, that's it. Uh, there's been a couple of short um, Boba Fett uh, trailers, but there's really they're really not giving much away about this new show. Um, what's going to happen with that? I think there's been a lot of stuff. People, I've heard some gossip. That apparently, there's somebody says that they saw um, Baby Yoda Gro- Grogu in a in in a scene from this new show. So whether the Mandalorian is going to make a, a crossover in Boba Fett, which I think could happen, I don't know. Um, but it's all rumours. But they really are keeping mm. production very sealed, and we don't know what's going on. Um, what else here? No, that's about it. That's too much. Not not a lot this week. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I have <laughs> to say, I've, I've got a party. Have you seen Cobra Kai yet? No, I've not seen Cobra Kai at all. Yeah, give it a go. Okay. I, I, the, the, the new series, all of it's out on uh, New Year's Eve. Oh, so um, me, yeah, that's me starting for the new year. Are you watching the new Marvel thing? What's it called? Hawk, what it's called? I've seen first two episodes, I'm building them up. I think final episodes next week, I think. Uh, how many episodes are there? Is it, is it how many? Six. Six. The show two on its opening week. It's been panned, actually, but I did watch two. I thought it's not too bad. But well, he's maybe... like the shit. He's if like a superhero, and he, all he can do is find a bow and arrow. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, he was always a bit in the background, you know I mean? wasn't he? It's not yeah. like uh, Loki was. It? Never, never ran out of bows and arrows, did he? You know, he just seemed to have an <laughs> infinite supply of them. You know, oh, but, dear. but we prevail. We, you know, it looks all right. So I'm going to watch that over Christmas. Mm. Well, I'll probably be watching some more Brookside over Christmas. <laughs> and if you're interested, we have some T-shirts which you can buy <laughs> off um, YouTube, <laughs> off, off uh, 
Any no. sci-fi, but only <laughs> 400 quid per <laughs> copy of it. Predator versus Brookside. Um, oh. But, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to keep going about Brookside. But it's just, where do you watch as much as I have? Which is really well, sad. Well, if you want to do, like, do a solo one sci-fi special on Brookside. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Like, in a new year. In a year we will. Brookside is part of culture and pop culture. It's part of, got a big fan base. Yeah, you I'm know, not surprised. And, uh, I'm they surprised have Brookside it's... conventions and all that. So, do they? You know, I didn't know they had that. I think That's so, quite yeah. Interesting. I know they have uh, off Feed the Same Pet convention. I've never Yeah, I know about Feed the Same Pet because that's a classic. But I didn't know that Brookside had. Um, I, I, quite I, a there will, there's a massive fan base for Brookside. I've read the yeah. comments on after episodes. And people adore it, you know. And yeah, I'm not surprised. I, it was the best so proper out of all of them. I watched it. So. I love it. It's so good. But I'm surprised it's not out there like you can buy. But there's so many episodes, isn't there? There's 3,000 episodes. That's why, and all the ones I'm watching are VHS recordings from 30 years hey, ago. I, I, yeah, a couple of years ago, about I watched it. You remember Crossroads from 70s? Oh, damn, 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 yeah. Damn, damn. One I watched from, for about a week and uh, with, with Sandy and David Hunter <laughs> and all that in the hotel. And and I watched I, the, um, the sets and Miss Diane. I watched, I, I watched about 40 episodes. There's, and, you um, know, I on. quite enjoyed it. There's a, there's a community centre I drop off once a week to, and there's a guy in there, and I do, I do nickname him Benny. I just do. <laughs> it just reminds me of Benny. <laughs> and one of these days, I'm going to say, all right, Benny, how are you doing? <laughs> like well, hey, 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 he, ended up, he invested all his money into these, uh, like, leisure centres or something. You know, did these, he? Like, well, he did. I think he owned a chain of them. You oh, remember, yeah, they were like, Dave, you take your kids out there, and they had them ball things in there, and all that. It were like... Oh, yeah. You take your kids, they were, like, they were like, they had things in there, you know. And really had a chain of them, but I think they went under. Oh, You know, I think happens. so, yeah. And then yeah. they tried getting back into the new crossroads, but they didn't bring him back. It's funny how sometimes it doesn't happen for people who have been in, like, when they reboot it or they remake it yeah. or they restart it, it doesn't always work out. It's the same with Doctor Who, that um, they've always said that the BBC, you know, people say, why don't you bring back some of the more of the old companions? And they got Sarah Jane back. But, um, you know, I would have loved to have seen some of the old um, um, companions from all yeah, the... No, oh, they never do that. They only did Sarah Jane. Oh, no, we saw... Um, what's her name from the John Pertwee years? She was in... Um, Joe. 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 Joe was in it one episode. And that's all we've had. And Doctor Who's been on for, what, 16 years now since he's come back? So, yeah. you know, but they just don't seem to want to... But they should respect its legacy. That's what I think is important. As long as they don't bring Matthew Waterhouse back, I hate it. His character. <laughs> oh, poor Adric. Adric. I'm sorry. Adric. I fucking hated Adric. <laughs> so did you laugh when he died? I'm good. I, now, that's a nasty question to ask. He's gone! He's gone! It's a thing that I would have, I would have got off on him dying in Doctor Who. <laughs> you know, I did. Yeah, I did. I did. I mean, did you see the extra on the video on the DVD? Did you no. see the extra? What happened well, on the extra? I, well, on the at the end, on 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 the actual episode where he died on the DVD it was released. Yeah. <coughs> they did a five-minute shot. He survived. Oh, actually, no. I remember something about that. Yeah, he survived, right? Yeah. He, he ended up in a uh, dinosaur period, and he crashed. And he's walking about, and this dinosaur came and at him. <laughs> Cyberman headset goes excellent. I, I see. I'd, I'd forgotten it until you said, but now I, that's that's You're coming probably back. Seen it, yeah. yeah, it must have been a long time ago, but I seem to vaguely remember something about I that. I just hated him. I, hated I know you did. I know. Test, oh, I, right. I didn't like Turler either. Right in February. In February, yep. I know we're, we're yep. playing ahead. We've got to do a fifth Doctor special. Well, uh, not special episode. We've not done the fifth doctor yet, and that that, that's my we'll era. Cover him. We're gonna have to talk about him. Man. That's I why I bought. I met him once. Horrible. You said he was a miserable sod. He said. was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> bloody well, you know. But I saw when the uh, when, I was, when I met Dominic Keating in um, Malcolm Reed, in, in, and he, the guy was just like his character on on Enterprise, and um, he came across as not particularly pleasant. He was, wasn't nasty, but he. Oh, I've, I've met Dominic Keating. Not no, met I mean the, 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 the nicest one I met was Denise Crosby, who was absolutely lovely. I met her and chatted to her for a while. She was really nice. She was just a person who just loved being associated with Star Trek. And, you know, I know that deep down she regrets that she left when she did in the first season. But, uh, yeah, I definitely thought um, Denise Crosby 
was really nice, and so did um, Anthony Montgomery, Paul Stamets from uh, yeah, Discovery. I, like I met, I met nice. him. He, one of my he was really, characters. really yeah. nice guy. The actor in real life, he was really nice. Uh, he even let um, us take a picture with my daughter with him, and he was just a really nice guy. So That's cool. it's funny how, yeah, nice guy, and I like his character on on Discovery as well. I think he's done really good. So um, yeah, good up to him. All right, mate. Well, uh, this is it. Now we're going to have a what we're doing next week. We're doing I'll be the same pet, which is a show yes. we recorded ages ago. And then, so this is it for Christmas for us. We will also try and do a, a Merry Christmas thing on Christmas Day or something, which we'll do uh, next week, Martin, if we can get the chance. Um, so thank you for another year of uh, some wonderful shows that we've talked about. I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, we've come so far and I can't believe that we're getting close to 100 episodes. That's fantastic. You know, I never thought we'd get that far. We've, we've talked about so many films and TV shows um, and... Um, it's been a real pleasure uh, so far to have you as my co-host. You've always stuck by me. We've also had some great co-hosts as well, uh, guest co-hosts. Oh, nice. um, yeah, 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 don't enjoy it. Get them all on, or just some video recording. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, oh. And, and we're, we're hoping, and I have contacted um, Trek fan. Um, and he said that he's hopefully going to be joining us for episode 100 which will be filmed in about a month's time it should go out in early feb so hopefully he could join us because he's been a very big supporter of the show and we have our thanks to give him for that so on that note we were going to finish because we keep mentioning it brookside one more time this is julia brogan who is a nosy old neighbor on the show I don't know. I came across this one as watching episodes. I thought it was funny, and I thought, what a way to finish the show um, for 2021, at least the ones in in production order from when we're doing this. So, Martin, thank you very much. We will see you next week, and then we'll be back in 2022 with, um, I think we're doing, oh, yes, Lost in Space. So, Martin, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Live long Live and prosper. Long Very kind.